So I'm really excited to tell you guys about this paper. I'm Hattie L. Zane. Uh, this is joint work uh, with Ricardo Colini Valdeschi, Brian Land, Oka Shrivers, all of whom are at Meta. Um, when I did this work, I was uh, an intern at Facebook and a PhD student at University of Pennsylvania. I'm now uh, also at Meta since uh, submitting this. Um, great. And I'm I, just as an FYI, this is going to be a fairly high level talk. I really encourage you to read the paper for all the mathematical details, um, but hopefully this will get you excited. Um, OK, so what's the context ad auctions? You're here at WebConf, so you probably know that ad auctions are really important in the online economy, powering a ton of the revenue. Um, and so what do they do? Basically, you can think of ad auctions as forming a, a sort of two-sided matching market. Um, they're given some bids by advertisers. They're going to match ads to slots. These are slots for the users, um, where the users will see the ads. Um, and so just sort of schematically, what does that look like? Well, imagine I have a bunch of slots and then I have a bunch of ads. You know, I got to somehow match them. There are bids that the advertisers give me and then the advertisers have some secret values. Then we'll talk about this in a little more detail in a second. But just sort of schematically, that's why you can think of it as sort of a two-sided matching. Um, but it's not just any two-sided matching. So in general, this, this problem has a little bit more structure, which is really useful for analysis. Um, so in particular, uh, advertisers don't really care about what slots they get. They care about whether their conversion event happens or not. For example, if it's a click or a purchase or whatever. Um, but usually we expect user attention to decline as you scroll down the feed, um, which means that the probability of engagement also declines down the feed. And so uh, advertisers are going to value the lower slots less than they value the higher slots, even given the same uh, you know, value for a click. Okay, so. Um, that's sort of a, a fact of how this, the structure is. And then the sort of assumption that makes things usually tractable in previous work um, is basically assuming that uh, valuation is separable. So what do I mean by separable? Well, it means simply that the advertiser's value for slot is the product of the click value times the probability of the slot. Um, and they all agree on the click probability of the slot. If you make this assumption, you get the standard position auction setting, which is really well known. And there's a lot of nice results that you get in that setting um, you know, using the separability assumption. So in particular, greedy allocation and optimal allocation with respect to the bids are the same. Um, there's an equilibrium in GSP with the same welfare as the DCG mechanism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but unfortunately, separability probably doesn't hold in practice. Um, there's a lot of empirical work sort of you know, pointing to this idea. And you can also just imagine yourself, if you're scrolling down in a feed, um, is, are you, do you think a video is, is more likely or a sort of text ad way down in the feed to, 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 get, um, to get your attention? Um, so we'd like some sort of model, that's just an example, obviously. Uh, so we'd like some sort of model that uh, relaxes this uh, separability assumption um, but without giving up too much on, on structure because structure is, is sort of useful. So we want some sort of intermediate model. Um, and the ad type setting proposed uh, by Kalini Valeski et al. Uh, previously is a really nice um, sort of intermediate model. So how does this work? Well, instead of saying it's a free for all and ads completely disagree on the values of slots, we say that ads are in different types. So in this you know, little example, um, there are red ads and blue ads and, um, the click-through rates for the red ads uh, decline pretty slowly over position, whereas the click-through rates for the blue ads are gonna decline really steeply. And taking that into account, you might wanna um, change how you would position the ads relative to if their click-through rates were, were changing the same way. Okay, so what's previously known about the setting? Well, it was proposed. Um, the authors in that paper did a lot of nice work on showing how to compute prices fast, tractable, some hardness results um, for sort of extra constraints, et cetera. But really nothing was known about the strategic implications of the setting. Um, and that's really the goal of uh, this work. We'd like to understand um, you know, what we can about strategic, strategic implications. In particular, can we talk about performance bounds, price of anarchy? Um, in general, can we talk? Can we characterize equilibria um, in even in a small setting? Um, and then, you know, using realistic data, what can we say about revenue and uh, welfare in practice? Um, and so, we're going to tackle all these. Um, and the experimental part is also pretty cool. We're using data from a, an unnamed uh, large advertising platform. Okay, so uh, just sort of to set up the framework. 
Um, the way that we're thinking about this is uh, auctions have to answer two questions, right? Who gets what and how much are they charged? Um, so in terms of allocation, we can talk about um, greedy allocation where you're just going from top to bottom for the highest open slot, you're allocating it to the highest discounted bidder and so on. Uh, or the optimal allocation where you're trying to figure out the allocation that maximizes the overall total discounted bid value. Um, and then in terms of pricing, uh, we'll consider sort of two principles. One is second price or generalized second price pricing, um, which basically just says charge the bidder the minimum they could have bid to still get the slot that they ended up with. Um, the externality principle on the other hand is to charge bidders the amount of loss that they caused to others relative to a counterfactual in which they were never in the auction. Um, and so you, you might notice that both of these are dependent on the allocation algorithms that you choose. So really you can kind of think of these choices as characterizing four auctions. Um, if you do greedy allocation and GSP pricing, you get the standard, um, well, what's known as the standard position auction if the other assumptions also hold. Um, if you have optimal allocation and VCG pricing, you have the sort of standard victory clark Groves mechanism. Um, and then you have these off diagonal formats, which are non-standard. Um, and you might ask, well, why do I care about any of these non-standard mechanisms? Um, so in general, right, these, there's a lot of complications in this setting in particular. Uh, these auctions are happening super, super fast, like, you know, milliseconds, et cetera. So you might have to worry about efficiency. And in general, reallocation is a lot faster than the optimal allocation. Or you might worry about the degree of uh, incentive compatibility violation, you know, the incentive to misreport. Um, so, you know, in general, you could be trading optimality for efficiency or incentives for revenue. And in particular, in, in the ad type setting, these are not all, you know, they don't collapse in the same way that greedy and optimal collapse, for example, in the, in, you know, the, pos the old position auction uh, set. So just to recap our setup, right, we are going to match uh, as the slots using an auction. Slots have different click-through rates, and, and these differ by ad types. Bidders are going to submit their bids for the click, um, and everyone's thinking in terms of expected value because this happens so often. And the mechanism is going to decide who gets what slot and what do they pay, and we have these sort of four um, uh, auctions that we're considering. Um, and just sort of uh, as a reminder on what equilibrium concepts we might be considering, right? So first off, we're going to assume that agents are bidding strategically to maximize profits. They don't have to bid their value or anything like that. Um, you know, they can lie. Um, and we'll look at both full information setting, uh, Nash. So that's where we'll look at the price of anarchy. Um, and the reason that we look there is because, uh, first of all, it's, it's sort of more straightforward. And also you can use uh, extension theorems in general to map this to repeated settings and incomplete information settings. Um, and then we'll also look at the uh, incomplete information setting um, for, to characterize uh, Bayes Nash equilibrium. Um, and just sort of as a, as a reminder of, of key quantities, um, Right, the, the sort of important things to talk about are welfare, revenue, optimal allocation, and this price of anarchy. Um, and you know, like I said, because this is a very high level talk, I didn't want to, except for one slide, you know, overwhelm you with equations. So feel free to check out the paper for you know the, all the math. But um, just as a reminder, so welfare is the sum of position discount and expected value, right, accruing to advertisers. So what you normally think of welfare, just the only thing to really keep in mind is that uh, in particular, this is the value, not the bid. So the auctioneer does not really even observe the welfare directly. Um, revenue, again, what you think is the sum of expected charges to advertisers given their bids, et cetera. Um, the optimal allocation is just the assignment of as to slots that's gonna maximize the true welfare. Again, the welfare is not directly observable to the auctioneer. Um, and then the, the price of anarchy is the ratio of welfare under the best allocation um, to the the equilibrium welfare in the worst uh, equilibrium. Okay, um, so let's talk about performance first. So as I said, sort of in the general setting, we're focusing on welfare um, and we can think about guarantees and what we can expect in the worst case, okay? So in guarantees, you know, we wanna say like, uh, you know, what's the worst, uh, you know, how, how can we, how, what one can we ensure about the price of anarchy? So we wanna give some upper bounds. Um, and this, this will kind of take a, a route that's maybe familiar to you uh, if you've seen some of this literature before, which is arguing from smoothness um, and sort of the, the analysis of the mechanisms is new, um, but the general argument is, is kind of standard. Um, and then for the worst case, we're gonna construct some suboptimal equilibria and um, you know, that'll let you see a lower bound. So for smoothness or rather semi-smoothness, um, you know, the rough idea is that 
a lot of the difference in the welfare um, between any two strategy profiles that you compare is, is gonna be coming from the differences in the marginal payoff um, via these individual deviations. Um, so you can look at the, at the formal definition, um, but a standard result is basically that if you have this quantitative condition on how smooth the game is, or semi-smooth the game is, then you get a, a bound on the price of anarchy. Um, and so, as I said, that's a standard argument. What is not standard is to show that in this setting, these mechanisms have these various smoothness conditions. Um, and for the greedy allocations, it's basically enough to show that bidders won't be overcharged. Um, when you're doing GSP pricing, this is kind of obvious, but when you're doing VCG pricing, it's a little bit more complicated to show. Um, and there's this neat little trick of basically writing each bidder's price um, in terms of the price and the bid of the bidder who would take his spot sort of in the, in the counterfactual. And then you can use strong induction uh, to prove it. Um, and then for the optimal allocation and, and GSP pricing, it's, it's sort of a lot trickier and, and that approach doesn't work directly. Um, so we, we do have some results in that domain as well, um, but they're, they're kind of crude. So in particular, these are the upper bounds that, that we can get on the price of anarchy. So you can see for greedy GSP, greedy VCG, we're getting bounds of four. And then for uh, optimal allocation and GSP pricing, we get this sort of um, bidder dependent and instance dependent um, bound. And so it is uh, you know instance optimal. Um, but but uh, yeah, it, it could be bad if the if the discounts are are very different. So that's probably very pessimistic, um, and and room for future work. Now, in terms of lower bounds, just to give you an example of how this might work, um, you know, imagine I have two slots and two ads, and I'm looking at optimal allocation with GSP pricing, right? So second price pricing. Um, and maybe there's red and blue and, you know, without loss of, jet, or, you know, for this example, I can just say that their click-through rates are, are one for the top slot and then they have some different click-through rate for the, for the bottom slot. Um, so, like I said, I don't wanna go into all the details here, but basically the idea is there is some configuration of valuations, um, you know, and this configuration should be non-empty, right? Identified in the, in the sort of upper left such that this profile over here on the right is basically going to be, uh, is going to be an equilibrium. Um, and it's sort of inducing the wrong allocation in the sense that it's the, the equilibrium allocation is not the one that is welfare maximizing, it's, it's worse. Um, and then you basically play with the parameters and you can show, okay, that if I play with them enough, I get to you know, three fourths or whatever in this case. Um, and so you can do this for each, uh, for each format. And now you get these constant um, lower bounds of the price of energy. Um, so you kind of have, it, it's not like quite tight or anything, but it's nice that at least in two of these, we have constants in both directions. And then we have uh, the sort of open direction for the last one. Okay, so equilibrium characterization, we're just gonna look at a, a very special case where we have two bidders, two slots, each their own type and, um, Without loss, they, they get a click through of, of one in the first slot and then they get different ones in the, in the second slot. Um, but their valuations for clicks are drawn IID from a uniform distribution. Um, so how do we analyze this? Well, like just consider if you're doing the greedy allocation and second price pricing, right? You can write down the conditions for when A gets the top slot um, versus gets the second slot and for what they pay in these two cases and, and for the uh, uh, valuations. Uh, what they end up getting. And so, um, you know, you can write down these conditions for each of these auctions and analyze them. And just sort of important to know that, right, you're, you're analyzing this with respect to, to bids, but then, you know, once you posit the existence of some sort of equilibrium, um, then you can work out what the parameters are, right? And, and you can actually show that these are sort of um, simple in their, in their form. These are all linear equilibria. Uh, among linear equilibria, they are the unique linear equilibria, but there are sort of more equilibria that are not uh, linear. Um, but they have this nice property, right? That, that you, know, you might expect simple equilibria to be particularly attractive um, to bidders. Um, anyway, they all have this sort of shading, but what's kind of weird about one of them is that in greedy allocation and ECG pricing, one of the bidders is actually um, shading up while the other is shading down. So that's a little bit strange perhaps. Um, if you write down the implied revenue, you get this uh, kind of cool equivalence result that the two standard auction formats are revenue equivalent here, and they're both better than the non-standard formats, which are also rev revenue equivalent. 
Um, okay, so I know we're sort of running out of time, but I would love to show you these experiments real quick. Um, so just in terms of how do we, like, what are we doing with experiments, right? How do we, why are we, what are we looking at in practice? We want to evaluate this in practice. So we need to look at sort of real distributions or realistic distributions. Um, but in general, it's very hard to just like find equilibria, um, especially if you're allowing mixing and stuff like that. So how do we do this? Well, we use no regret learning algorithms. Um, and if you're not familiar with those, those are algorithms that are guaranteeing good performance uh, in hindsight relative to the best, you know, fixed alternative, whatever. Um, the, the, the point is that it's known that if you, if players are using no regret learning to play in a repeated game setting, then um, you will converge to equilibrium and the particular kind of equilibrium depends on, on the assumptions. Um, but um, the point is if we have some evaluation data, we can use no regret learning to learn some sorts of equilibria. So our first experiment is um, to validate the Bayesian equilibria that we found. We will need um, to conclude shortly, so. Right, got it. Um, is to validate the Bayesian equilibrium that we found, um, and we use the population interpretation, no regret learning. You can see our theory is in uh, sort of dotted lines, and our uh, actual results are in solid lines, uh, which is, you know, pretty close, even the equilibria that is sort of counterintuitive. Um, and then finally, our, uh, our second experiments, we, we're pulling random advertisers and also random auctions. Um, we're sort of normalizing bids, getting rid of outliers, et cetera. So this is not totally, and, and it's bids, right? So it's not valuations. It's not totally, totally realistic uh, or, you know, actual valuations, but it's probably fairly realistic. And we have a sort of relatively large instance, four slots, nine bidders, and we're using geometric discount curves. Um, so now we can ask, how do these auction formats perform on a realistic distribution? Um, and you know, the, the top row is the random advertisers, the bottom is random auction, and then we got revenue and the sort of empirical price of anarchy. So the, the sort of takeaways real quick is, first of all, all of these auctions are doing a lot better in terms of price of anarchy than, you know, you might have expected based on our worst uh, our bounds. Um, there, there is variation and, and VCG op seems to do the best, unsurprisingly, but uh, in general, it's, it's not so much. As for revenue, if you're looking at the random advertiser, um, uh, auction, you might notice that there is an apparent like correspondence to our, our result. Um, maybe this is because of the, the sort of form of the random advertisers being independent, but just in general, um, you know, if you look at the random auction, so that's sort of totally different. Um, and there is wide variation in the revenue of, of each format. So, you know, it's basically an empirical question as to what format will work best in, in any um, given setting. So I, I hope this is uh, interesting and then I guess you're excited to read the paper. Uh, thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much, great talk. And uh, we are beyond schedule, but uh, we leave time for a quick question if there, there is any. Okay, so I, I have a quick question. Uh, did, did you, do you have any analysis for the efficiency in the case of uh, where the bidders are no regret learners? Or is it just the empirical? Yeah, right now that's just empirical results. Yeah, okay, so interesting. So thank you very much.